Hello, hello, everybody, and welcome back to Wednesday Live here on the Victoria Marie YouTube channel. I'm Victoria Calvin, and I am so glad that you are here. We go live every Wednesday here on the channel. Today, we probably won't be on too long because I am continuing a project that I started last week using art parts, and the whole idea of using art parts is to be able to do layouts faster and be a little bit more efficient. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit about that. Also, too... Um, God, do I have any reminders or anything? I don't have anything. I don't have any reminders today. So I think we'll just jump right into it. Uh, hello to everybody who's just joined us. Hey, Suze. Hey, Nicole. She says, how's the tooth going today? It is not better. <laughs> um, I've been suffering from a little bit of tooth pain right down here. It feels more like it's in the gum. And I went to my dentist and had my, had a temporary crown replaced. I'm waiting for the permanent crown to come in. And that has not seemed to resolve the problem. So I'm going to actually call them after today's live and figure out what's going on. Because anytime I eat, talk, or drink, it just flares up. And it's just really, really intense pain here. It feels like it's in my gum. So I don't know what's going on. They took x-rays and they said that everything looks clear. It doesn't look like there's any infection or anything. So I have no clue what is going on inside my mouth. So hopefully I'll be able to find some relief sooner than later. So thank you, Nicole, for asking that. Hello, everybody. We've got Karen and Melissa and Amy. Crafty Maggie, hello. Hello, Suze. What's going on? Love it, love it. Uh, and Mary and Heather, hello. So glad you guys are here. If you are in a position to grab a project and craft along with me, why not and do that? I know some of you are at work, kind of on the down low right now, <laughs> trying to keep it low key, make sure the boss doesn't see you. Unless, of course, you are the boss, then, you know, there you go. So, Annie Hoosel, we are going to get started on today's project. Last week, I talked about an art concept that I learned from mixed media artist Julie Faye Van Balls, where you can actually find her here on YouTube. And one of the things that she does is something called Art Starts. Last week, I talked about what that is, which essentially is making elements for a project in advance. There's a lot of noise going on here. <laughs> okay. Making, uh, I hear there's some noise going on in my kitchen, so I don't know what's going on. Um, <laughs> making art parts, which essentially is making elements in advance for a project that you can use, and it makes it a whole lot easier for you to put the project together when you sit down. Now you can't to make something. So when you can do this for anything, you can do this for mixed media and which is what Julie does. She creates mixed media backgrounds or, um, mixed media pages that she can use in her art journal. She can use it in her larger projects as well. Um, but I was thinking for scrapbooking, you can make art parts to create a variety of different projects. So essentially what you do is you pull out a kit or a collection or items out of your stash and you pre-make things that you can then use on a project. Now, I don't recommend doing this just to make a whole bunch of stuff just to have it sitting around in your stash. I like to make things that I know that I'm going to use um, on a project. So if I know I have some layouts coming up and I want to make some art starts for that, then I will. So that way those art starts already have a designated project and they're not sitting in my stash. Before, when I was doing something like this, I would make a whole bunch of embellishments and tags and all kinds of things that I can put on projects and they would just sit in my stash and wouldn't get used. And so I would then go and be like, what did I make this for? <laughs> So I ended up giving a whole bunch away to a friend of mine who ended up using it on her projects. And I decided, you know what? I'm busy. I got a lot of things that I want to make. So why not make art starts for a variety of projects so they can work in my on my scrapbook layouts. I can put them in my traveler's journal. I can put them in my one little word album. I can do all kinds of things with these art starts, but I want to assign them a project so I know that they'll get used. So in last week's live, I created some tags. I also pre-made a background in an embellishment cluster for a 12 by 12 page. So in today's live, I'm going to actually finish up that page. We're going to see how quickly that comes together. Okay. Linda says, yes, it's a staff meeting. Welcome to the staff meeting, by the way. <laughs> Patricia says, teleworking perks. Exactly. You can just have me on in the background while you're finishing up your reports. <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone who's just joined us. So glad that you're here. So I am going to, um, 
switch the screen. Actually, let me read this chat. Heather says, I have problems with mine lately. Been using good gum detoxifying toothpaste. Hopefully it's nothing major for you. You know what? I might try that. I do have some tooth sensitivity, so I was recommended to use Sensodyne, but I did not know there was gum detoxifying toothpaste. So I might try that and see if <laughs> that works um because right now it's just not the business even as i talk right now there's some dull pain there and it's usually sharp when i start talking and i need it to be resolved because next week by the way oh this was the announcement i was going to make before we go to the layout next week we will not have a live i'll have a recorded video because i will be at the scrapbook.com headquarters filming a class so i'll be there for two days next week and one of those days is a wednesday so i won't be on live next week because i'll be filming there which i'm really excited and i'll be sharing on my Instagram, my experience uh, being there. Their location is in Arizona. So I'll be flying from Texas to Arizona. I haven't been to Arizona a very long time, so I'm kind of excited uh, to go back. So that's where I'll be. So next Wednesday, there's no live, but there will be a recorded video. And then the following Wednesday, there will be one. And then the Wednesday after that, there'll be another recorded video because my family and I will be in Disney World. So I'll remind you all of that as it comes. Okay, so let me go ahead and switch my screen. Hello to everyone who's just joined us. Hello, hello. And let's get this going. I'm going to give it a second for you guys to see my desktop view. So glad that you're here. So glad you guys are here. Let me know if you're working on a scrappy project while you're watching or if you are, you know, just listening <laughs> today because you have other things going on. Alrighty. So I'm going to wait for this to switch over. It should be over. There we go. So let's make a layout. Last week, I constructed this layout. It's a 12 by 12 layout. And the collection that I'm using is the Simple Stories collection. This is a beautiful collection. I'm going to enable you because you know how we do at Victoria Marie Designs. This is called Simple Vintage Lemon Twist. And it was so popular that it sold out. And um, this is from Simple Stories. And they had to, of course, make some more. <laughs> so if you're not seeing it, just wait. It should come back in stock pretty soon. Um, so in any event, beautiful collection, absolutely love it. Has the blacks and yellows and the minty greens. This is like my complete jam. And so what I did was I took this collection and I made a bunch of art starts with it last week. And you can find that video on my uh, Wednesday Live playlist, by the way, just letting you know. So I have this 12 by 12 layout. I just took two of the pattern papers from that collection. And I also took some embellishments from the collection to create what I like to call a starter cluster, right? So this is an art start. I used some of the stickers as well as punched out a circle because as you know, if you've been with me for a while, when I'm layering, I like to start with an anchor. So this circle is the anchor. And I also popped in some flowers. I adhered all this with some temporary adhesive because if I wanted to change the orientation of this layout or change anything that I'm not pulling up permanent adhesive off the page. So this is an example of a 12 by 12 art start where I have the background already made and a starting cluster. And what happens is, is when you get ready to actually finish the page, half the work is done for you and most of the decisions are made. Now all you have to do is add your photos, your journaling, maybe some more embellishing, and then you're good to go. This is also idea if you are participating, whether in person or virtually, a scrapbook crop or retreat, to have a bunch of art starts all ready to go. That way you're not, especially if you're going to an in-person retreat or crop, you're not lugging all your stuff there. You can make up a whole bunch of art start pages and then just bring your photos, maybe a few other extra embellishments, and then you can just knock out layouts while you're there, okay? I like to take my time and do beautiful layouts, which I'm sure all we do, we all do. However, there are times where I just need to put the story down and I don't want to think too hard about it or my time is limited. So having something already pre-made certainly helps. So I've got my starter cluster good to go. Um, some other things that I made last week, I did make some tags, which I love using, and I might actually use one here on this layout. And all I did was I took a tag die, punched out some tags, and then of course layered them up using the die cuts and stickers that come in the collection. This is also a really, really great way to use up your kits and collections or and or your stash, okay? Pull some items out of your stash that you haven't used in a while. Here's another tag. These tags can go great on a scrapbook layout, but they can also go on a card. 
They can go in a traveler's uh, notebook spread. They can go into a memory planner, which is why I made these, because I do plan on using these in my memory planner. Um, they can go on a variety of different projects. So you can have some things that are versatile, not just using on a, to be used on a scrapbook page. And I also made this little interactive pocket for those of you who like adding pockets and things to your projects, or if you like pocket scrapbooking, what I did was I trimmed out this paper here so that when folded, it would be three by four, add a little bit of embellishing there and a little label. And this is something that I can stick inside of a pocket and flip up and have a photo and have some journaling. I could also put this on a scrapbook page too if I wanted an interactive element on my scrapbook page, traveler's notebook, that type of thing. So I try not to make too many because again, I don't want a whole bunch hanging out in my stash. I just want enough that I can use on a variety of projects and get my product used up, okay? So let's go ahead and bust out this layout now that half of it's pretty much been done. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring in my photos and these photos are trimmed to three by four. I resized them in Photoshop. And this is of me and my daughter. I have on a t-shirt that says book nerd. And then she's holding two books. We're at our favorite bookstore called Monkey and Dog in downtown Fort Worth. So if you're ever in downtown Fort Worth, check out Monkey and Dog. They're an independent bookstore. Great, great owners, great staff. They're just so much fun. So we like to go downtown every now and then to Monkey and Dog, grab lunch at uh, Velvet Red Velvet Taco, delicious and then go and check out some books because we need more books like we need a hole in our head so I decided to scrapbook these photos and what I want to do I size them down because what I want to do is sort of nestle them here into this cluster I thought that would look really really pretty so I'm just gonna layer and just kind of nestle them just like that but I do want them to pop a little bit so I have a white trim around them, right border, but I am going to bring in some of the darker cardstock because, uh, again, I want this to pop just a little bit more. So I'm going to grab some of the cardstock from the collection. And let's see, I want something to kind of contrast against that yellow. I'm just looking here. So I think what I'm going to do is use my favorite pattern, which is raise your hand if you like a gingham check pattern. I mean, this is like my total jam. And then I'm going to use this uh, butterfly floral one as well to back my photos with. I also have my journaling pre-printed. I print this out or type it up on Microsoft Word and I print them out and cut them up on cardstock into little journaling strips. So another way that I like to add a story. So what I'm going to do, let me grab some adhesive. I'm going to be using some adhesive from scrapbook.com. This is permanent adhesive. I kind of go back between, back and forth between scrapbook.com's adhesive and Tombow Mono permanent roller adhesive. I'm gonna move this out the way real quick. And let's get these photos backed so we can have a little bit of contrast here. Hello to everyone who's just joined us. So glad you're here. So glad you're here. Okay, so I think I'm gonna do this photo. Actually, I'm gonna do my daughter's photo and this gingham, which is so cute. Just a little bit there. I'm gonna grab my scissors, and trim around it real quick, and then I'll do a little bit more of a precision cut here in just a second. Love this pattern paper. I love this collection. I might need to buy a second of this collection because it's just beautiful. Then I'm gonna take this other photo and back that just again, add a little bit more contrast on the layout. Set it to the side and let me bring out my paper trimmer. Hey, Christine, she said, this is my first live. I'm working on some cards while I watch. That's fantastic. That's fantastic. Linda's working on December daily. Janet's exercising as she's watching. That's a great activity to do. <laughs> uh, Deborah is watching on TV and digi scrapping. That's awesome. Hey, Crystal, what's going on? <laughs> how's, it, how's it going? So glad you're joining us. Loving the idea of art starts. I've uh, been mulling over other ideas, over ideas for how to do something like this. My pocket style uh, scrapbooking or my pocket page style. So many ideas. I'm so glad you're inspired. I'm so glad you're inspired. And I hope you guys are all inspired by this. This year, as I mentioned, my one little word this year is, is make. And I'm trying to make more. And I think in January, I did pretty good. 
not only scrapbooking, but just in general. Like I went to a baking class with my wife and um, I've also been working in my memory planner and some other things. And so one of the things that I, that I noticed or that I knew very early on is that in order for me to be successful this year, I need to also have really easy go-to projects and processes in place so that I'm not stalling myself on the decision-making process. <laughs> so having art starts definitely helps. Okay, so now I've got these photos back. I think, oh yeah, that's going to add the contrast that I need. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to work on this cluster so we can permanently adhere it down. And again, I have temporary adhesive on these elements, which helped out a lot. So I'm going to try to hold the elements in place while I adhere them down using my tape runner. I want to see how successful we are at this. And we do that. And I'm going to adhere them all as one unit. There we go. That worked. Ta-da! <laughs> <laughs> because I want to pop this up using some foam. So let me grab some foam. Um, here we go. I'm going to grab my big old honk and roll from scrapbook.com. I love their foam. And we're just going to put one here. It's going to cut me off a little chunk. And one here. Just going to add some height and dimension. Once you have your art start, at this point, it's just basically finishing up your project. And then you can go on to the next. Whether you build out an entire page or just half a page, one of the some of the things we get stuck on as creatives is that is the is the thinking, right? The overthinking. How are we going to design? Trying to make decisions. When you already have the decisions made for you, it makes it a lot easier to construct projects. And I try really hard to make sure that I'm not spending too much time in the decision-making process because then that takes away from the creative process. I want to be able to come in here and to get as much, to be as efficient as I can with my scrapbooking time. Even though I'm up here all the time for work purposes, a lot of what I do during the week is not creating. <laughs> I will tell you that. I'm trying to change that this year. I have to put a bigger focus on creating because that's how I inspire all of you. Um, so I want to make sure that I'm creating and I have projects to share, but I also have to have processes in place that make it efficient for me to scrapbook. Now there's some pages that I take a little bit longer on. Maybe I'm doing something like a mixed media situation or whatever, and I just want to take the time and that's cool. But I found over the years of scrapbooking, and I've been scrapbooking for a little bit over 17 years now, um, I appreciate not when I'm sitting down and I just want to concentrate on something, I appreciate not having to spend a lot of time making decisions. And this is where art starts comes in because I can get a lot of that decision making out before I even commit anything to a layout. Okay. So I am just popping all of this up using some foam, just cutting the pieces that I need. Can I squeeze this in somewhere? I don't want to waste it. Here's that. There we go. And this is going to give it a little bit of height so then I can tuck my photos behind it. So I'm pretty sure this is what I want. I'm just going to pop it here as planned. I'm going to take the backing off of here. Oh, it's lunchtime for some folks who are telecommuting. <laughs> Hello, Heather from Wisconsin. How are you? All righty. Let me know in the chat, how long does it typically take you to make a scrapbook page? I'm interested to know. I can usually make a page within about 30 minutes, 30 to 40 minutes, depending on how involved. The more involved, the longer it takes me. If I'm filming a process video, then it usually takes me a little bit longer than what I would do if I'm not filming. But let me know, how long does it take you to make a layout? And do you struggle to make decisions while you're making layouts? Okay, so I'm going to stick this here. A little bit of dimension. Not going to make it bulky. Right? And we're good to go. Throw this away. 
Okay, so let's bring in the photos. Normally I'd add foam behind my photos, but I'm not gonna do that because I'm gonna just tuck my photos in like so. And I think I need to pop this up just a little bit to bring my photo in. Just a tiny smidgy. Yeah, there we go. I think that'll work. Let the focal point be my baby girl. Not so much baby anymore, guys. She's as tall as me, if you can believe it. Those of you who've been around with me since the beginning, Corinne was about three or four when I started my channel, something like that. And uh, she certainly is a much, she certainly is into uh, tween mode, <laughs> for sure. Tween mode all the way. I'm going to make some minor adjustments here. Just some minor ones. There we go. Okay, that's looking good. I thought I was going to use this here, but I might come back to it because I haven't decided. Okay, so I have this butterfly that I wanted to use here. And I might bring in a few other things. The next thing I want to do before I go any further is I want to work out the title. And there is a chipboard piece here, amongst many, that says Sweet Life. And I think I might use that. So let's see. Let me pull it out. There's others that are starting to fall. So I'm trying to keep those contained while I'm trying to get these other ones out. Uh, let's see. Heather says less than 20 minutes unless I do mixed media stuff. Uh, Patty says, I think about two hours. Usually take a break. Come back to it. Um, let's see. Oh, we got lots of Heathers here today. Um, Alma says, gosh, at least a couple of hours. I do struggle making decisions. Yeah. Barb says it takes me way too long to do a page. I overthink everything. It can take me days to do one page. Christine says a few hours. Heather says it takes me more than an hour. Uh, more like an hour if I don't have anything planned. I try to prep things ahead so I can get more done. Absolutely. Like at my crops. Absolutely. Same here. Um, Honey Crew says definitely more than 30 minutes, but it varies depending on if I use my Cricut or not. Okay. Um, if I'm filling it, I can do a page in 30 minutes, says Amy, on other days, hours. Deb says, I remember that day. I'm 6'1 now. And my son is a toss. Oh, yes. Kids growing up. Absolutely. I know they're giants. Uh, DV says it varies one hour to two days. I'm a caregiver for my husband. Yeah. So if there's, there's other things that could, um, uh, interrupt that process for sure. If you have other responsibilities and things going on, sometimes it's hard to sit down and be able to do something for a certain period of time. It may take a little bit longer. All right. So this says sweet life. And I think I'm going to put that there. I kind of like that. I thought about putting the title up here, but I'm not sure because I want to put a tag there. So I think I'm going to commit to this being here. And these chipboard stickers have adhesive on the back. You can just take the release paper off. Well, in theory. <laughs> there we go. All right, so I'm just going to pop that there. And I think I'm probably going to put a little extra adhesive on here just in case because Texas weather is kind of funky sometimes. And um, we get a little bit of humidity or a whole lot of humidity. And that means sometimes um, embellishments and things don't stay on the way they need to. So I'm going to grab my Barely Art glue, which I love. It's my favorite. And get this a little extra adhesive on. Usually I don't have problems with the uh, chipboard from Simple Stories. American Crafts chipboard seems to not stay. I don't know what formula of adhesive is used at manufacturing, but that seems to not stay sometimes. Margaret says, I take about one to one and a half hours if I have the photos ready. Picking papers is the most time consuming. Yeah. I think there's some tasks that can definitely be um, more time consuming than others for sure. And it impedes upon the decision making process. And I always say if it's taking you a long time 
to make decisions about what you're putting on a layout, take a step back and take a breath. <laughs> because honestly, we get so caught up in having the right papers and the right this and the right that, that it takes away from the storytelling experience when we overthink it, right? Debbie says, struggle with decisions. Exactly. This is why I'm such a big proponent of um, taking the time to plan your layouts and to prep so that you're not having to make the decisions when you sit down to create a layout, right? You don't have to worry about, oh, well, you know, what embellishment am I going to use? What papers am I going to use? What photos am I going to use? And you can break that out over a week or so period, right? You have 30 minutes here, pick out your papers. You got 30 minutes there, pick out your font. Uh, you know, something to help that process go by a little bit more smoothly than sitting there and hee-hawing when it's time to actually put a layout together. All right, so I thought about putting the journaling, once I get the journaling in order the way that I want it, right down here. So that gives me more opportunity to embellish over here. I think I like that. I thought about putting the journaling here, but I actually kind of like a little bit more of that white space there. So I'm going to put the journaling down here, which just basically says, uh, there's nothing like spending an afternoon at monkey and dog. And, um, um, there we go. We don't need any more books, but who's counting? This is the way we live, which is true. We buy a lot of books. In fact, I just bought two books and I finished one of the books that I bought this past week um, and getting ready to start it on another. Well, I actually started a new book this week that I'll probably finish either tonight or tomorrow. But we just love books. I mean, that's just our life. That's just our life. Um... Wendy says, making page kits is essential, absolutely makes decision making much easier. And you know what happens is that sometimes we think the steps, the preparation steps, somehow take away from the making part of the experience. And really, when you take the time to prep your materials, to make kits, to organize and print your photos, to make art starts, to do all of these things in advance, when you sit down to actually make a layout, then all you have to do is worry about the creative process and enjoying the story versus trying to make a whole bunch of decisions that prolong that process even more, right? And then you get frustrated because you're not getting things done. It becomes a whole thing, right? Okay. So this layout, I could stop here and be completely satisfied with the layout, but I want to add a few more, few more little things. So I'm thinking about using one of my art starts. And I might dismantle hearts. <laughs> I might dismantle one of my art starts as I'm thinking about it. I kind of, I like this idea of this tag, but I kind of like, I don't know. I'm trying to decide what I want to do. I kind of like it right there. Maybe a smaller one. I like the idea of the tag. I'm just trying to figure out how I want to use it. Do I want a cluster? No, that's too much yellow. Um, let's see, I'm trying to decide what I want to do here. I like that idea. Maybe build a little cluster here. Maybe take that banner off and I can have a little cluster or something here. Thought about that. Okay, we'll come back to that. Okay, so what I want to do I definitely want that butterfly there, that's for sure. And I wanna look at what I have left in terms of die cuts and whatnot and finish out this page. I think for me, scrapbooking is definitely an experience for sure. And I never want to feel rushed or feel like I have to rush myself whenever I'm, whenever I'm working on something. But I also have so many ideas and so many things that um, I want to do that I don't want to spend unnecessary time trying to figure out 
all the details. I might change that up. I really want to use that tag, but then I also want to do something else. Um, I don't want to waste my time trying to hee-haw over decisions when I can just simply just make and have fun and have those decisions already made for me via Art Starts. There's another butterfly here. Okay, so I think what I'm going to do is I kind of like this sort of wispy little butterfly situation going on. Those just look really fun. It looks like the butterflies are just kind of floating this way. Let's see if they, there's a butterfly here. I think I'm going to do something like this. Want that there? Can I pull this up? Sure you can, Victoria. How about something like this? That no, because I want I want the eye to kind of go this way. I like how wispy that looks. All right, let's get some foam dots. All right, I'll bust out some scrapbook.com foam. I'm just gonna pop this on here. Just putting on the finishing touches. I thought I was going to use a tag today, but you know, this art start, if I don't use it, I use this big old hunkin' art start. So if I don't use these, I'll use them on a card or something like that. But I'm kind of liking this sort of wispy butterfly situation going on. Butterflies are my favorite, favorite, favorite. All right, so while we are finishing this up, just a reminder, if you are liking what you see, make sure you hit that like button. And if you haven't subscribed already, make sure you do that. Come hang out with us, we have a lot of fun. And the links to my other socials are in the description. So make sure you check it out. All right. Oh, I love using repetitive elements. It makes putting pages together so easy. And you know what? You can't go wrong with simple stories. Seriously. Thank you, Barb. Sometimes the planning and prepping part is even more fun than the making part. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> I agree. And then, you know what? There's never a time when I've planned and prepped something that I would be like, oh my God, I shouldn't have wasted my time on that. If anything is, oh my goodness, I'm so glad <laughs> I took the time to plan and prep because now I can just sit down and have fun. I put on a movie, I have a, you know, grab a nice drink, a little snack, and then I'm able to put my pages together. In fact, I'm doing this process with my memory um, planner right now, where I have the journaling already, well, outlined, I should say. I'm typing up the journaling that's going to go inside the memory planner, because I kind of like that idea of having that typed up. And... Um, I already know the elements I'm going to use, which is from this collection and using some of my art starts, amongst other things. And um, yeah, I already have it figured out, so I don't have to stress about it. I have the last three weeks ready to go to finish up. All right, let's add in some other little pretties, I think. Let's see here. I thought I would add another little floral element. to kind of round out the floral elements. I'm gonna go back to my little tray. My little tray of things, little ting-tings. Okay, didn't like that. That might be a little bit too much. Let me see if I can find something smaller. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, yep. I kind of want a flower there, but I'm trying not to overthink it, too. That might be too much. Might be too much. Edit, 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 edit. All right, let's bring in some other stuff. We've got these um, decorative brads, which are my favorite. So I'm going to bring in the decorative brad and pop it right in the middle of my butterfly. Just to bring in a little bit of this black. Might be 
too big. Let's get the little small one. There we go. I really like that. That's so pretty. There's so much pattern and stuff going on. Like I don't need to do a whole bunch. I don't need to do a whole a whole ton. There are some chipboard pieces on here that look really cute. These are super sticky, so I'm just gonna hover that. Yeah, no, no, Victoria, you're just gonna leave it the way it is, cause yeah, I'm not even gonna go there. Okay, so these brads already have adhesive on the back, so you just pop them off, put them on your project. That add a nice little bit of shine, little zhuzhing. And let's see if there's anything else that I want to finish out this page. I didn't have to make a ton of decisions, just some little finishing touches here and there. Um, how about we grab from this chipboard, how about we grab a heart? Hmm. I love using hearts on layouts too. Just seeing what's available to me. Heart wise. I think the yellow ones might win out. So let's add a little bit more of a punch on the layout. Um, and let's do one more, kind of round it out. Where do I want to put this one? I kind of feel like this doesn't need it. Maybe I'll put it there. Nice and subtle, very pretty. Or maybe I'll just double up here. I kind of liked it on the butterfly. Okay, so let's add this on here. Got a lot of layering, all this dynamic pattern. I love it. Go big or go home, my friends. I love all this pattern. And let's get the backing off of this. And I'm adding just a little bit of liquid glue because sometimes these chipboard pieces, they kind of act funky if you live in an area where it gets super humid. And I think with that, this layout's done. The major part of it, the, the background and that this cluster, art start, all I had to do now was worry about the details. Okay. I think that should do it. For that I believe. Let's see. I really want to use this puffy sticker that says sunshine but I also don't want to I don't want to block that. I want to use it here maybe. I don't like that. I want to use it up here. Yeah I just don't think it adds anything to it. Alrighty cool. So we have got a completed layout how long did that take me? Hey, that took me 37 minutes almost. Um, so, which is great because that's usually how long it takes for me to finish a layout anyway. So this layout started actually last week as an art start. I build the uh, background. Hey, Aubrey Calvin, she chimed in. Aubrey says it needs glitter. <laughs> now you're probably joking, but you know I'd add glitter on there. <laughs> All right, so we built the background. That was the art start, and that helped to eliminate any of the decision making when I went to put the layout together. I also created this large layered cluster, of course, using elements from the uh, simple, I forget the name of this, this collection sometimes, simple vintage twist, lemon twist. And this was already constructed, and I used temporary adhesive to hold it in place until I was able to do the layout. With those two elements in place, all I then had to do was come add my photos and some finishing details, my title and my journaling, and this layout is done. And that is the benefit of doing art starts because you don't have to think too hard about it when it comes time to actually construct your project, whether that's a, um, a scrapbook layout, whether that's a traveler's notebook or planner spread. Aubrey says, or a Lisa Frank sticker. Yes, because a Lisa Frank sticker would go perfect on this layout. <laughs> <laughs> if you're looking for the last YouTube live, um, and she says, where can I find the art start? If you're looking for my last live where I talked about the art start and constructed the art start, go to my playlist here on the Victoria Marie YouTube channel and select the Wednesday live playlist. And you'll be able to see that. 
um, video. So I think that this turned out great. I love how wispy and everything looks. This is definitely my color jam. And it didn't take me too long to put this layout together a little bit, what, close to 37 minutes, probably a little bit under because I was chatting a little bit at the start of this live to put this layout together. So here's my challenge to you. Um, number one, <laughs> number one, if you are not in the process of prepping your projects in advance, I'm going to challenge you to try it. Try it for the month of February and see how you like it. And what I mean by that is in your crafty schedule, schedule times where you can work on your photos and that's the task that you do. And then maybe the next time it's time for you to work uh, on your scrappy projects, then you pull out product that you're going to use with those photos, whether it's from your stash, because you know I'm big on that this year. If it's from your stash, maybe it's a collection you haven't opened, maybe it's a kit that's been sitting in your studio, grab some product and assign that photo, a kit, a collection, or whatever product that you use. And then you do that in one session. And then maybe in another session, you create some art starts. And your art starts could be a background page. It can be a layered cluster. Um, it can simply be picking out papers that you can coordinate together and trimming them down that you can use in some way. And then that's a little bit of your crafty time that you're spending doing that. And then when it's time for you to actually construct the layout, you have the photos ready. You've already made the decision about product. You've made a decision about design because at that point you can pull sketches, you can play around with stuff without actually having to commit when you're doing it, when you finally get to doing the layout, but you're getting all of that thought process worked out before you sit down to make your layout. And then when you sit down to make your layout, all those decisions have been made already. And then you're not prolonging the experience of putting the layout together. You can just sit down. You've already got your papers picked out. You already have your photos picked out. You have your elements. You kind of have an idea of what you want to go design wise. And then you put your layout together and see how long it takes you. I guarantee you that that will help speed up that process a little bit because you know what? We have a lot of stories we want to document. And yeah, we want to take our time and have fun. But if it's taking you several days to complete one layout, then it's also keeping you from enjoying the other stories that you want to document. So having a process around this that works well for you, that allows you to get your pages done and enjoy the experience, I think is a number one. So I'm going to challenge you in the month of February to try some art starts, see if that works for you to help kind of eliminate that decision making paralysis when it comes to making layouts. And you can apply that to any type of project you want to. It doesn't just have to be a scrapbook page, it can be other projects too that you're working on, other creative projects that you may be into, whether it's embroidery or woodworking or painting or baking or whatever. Uh, there's a lot of things that you can do in advance to help you when you actually sit down to create your work of art. So I like this layout. I think it came out really great. I love this collection. I'll probably be buying like a second part of this collection because it's just so, so pretty. And it just, it speaks like spring to me. I think when I think of spring, I think of flowers and lemons and all that stuff. It's just so pretty. Absolutely love it. And I love this large cluster with the little butterflies. You guys know me. I love, love, love to layer. So I hope that you were inspired by this to create art starts have fun with your projects, put a process in place to help you be a little bit more efficient with your scrapbooking. Use your stuff, use all the things, right? Don't hoard it, use it. Um, Jocelyn says, February, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Margaret says, we'll use the planning process you suggested going forward. Give it a try. I say, give it a try for 30 days, see how you like it. By the way, even when you do this type of thing, when you create an art start or whatnot, it doesn't mean that you're married to what you created. If you need to change some things like I did, I was going to use a tag up here, but it ultimately didn't work for me and I decided to do something else. It's okay to make those game time decisions and tweak it the way you want to. Don't put any boundaries on your creativity that cause you stress. <laughs> Don't cause yourself any stress. Have fun with the process. All right, folks, I'm going to take a photo of this layout and I will post it on my socials. So make sure you stay tuned for that. Next week, we will not have a live because I'll be in Arizona filming at scrapbook.com. And I'm really excited. I hope to be sharing some of that process on Instagram. So if you don't follow me on Instagram, please make sure you do. I'm at Victoria Marie Scraps on Instagram. I haven't decided if I'm going to vlog it yet or not. Um, it's a pretty busy filming schedule. Most of the time that I'm there, I'm going to be filming. Uh, but I might try to capture some of that on video and share it 
with you if you're a patron if I end up filming it if you're a patron you'll get a first look at that and then I'll release it to uh, the greater Victoria Marie community after that um, also don't forget to subscribe here to the Victoria Marie YouTube channel we go live pretty much every Wednesday here on the channel and of course I have other content that I like to post make sure you hit the subscribe button and click the bell so you'll be notified each and every time I pop up here on the channel and as always thank you guys for joining me today and I will see you in another week or so <laughs> Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.